Hey everyone and welcome back to In The Kitchen With Pen and today we're going to be making a, another recipe in the Ninja 15 in 1. This recipe can be made in any pressure cooker. It could be made in a slow cooker but it can also be made on the hob. So don't think that you have to, oh I need to rush out and buy a Ninja 15 in 1. You don't. If you can, yeah do it really really great piece of kit as you're seeing i hope from all the videos i've posted so what are we making well let's have a little look at the ingredients see if you can guess and the ingredients in no particular order are macaroni um but you could use any pasta sometimes i use spaghetti that i break up i was hoping to get some ditali but unfortunately, Sainsbury's don't stock it. Oh, I'm going to have to have a word, aren't I? So, pasta. Salt and pepper, obviously. Garlic. Courgette. Celery. Carrots. An onion. Some passata some tomato puree, vegetable stock and some curly kale. I'm not going to be using all this curly kale, don't worry. So what do you think we're making? Well I'm not, I'm not mean, I'll tell you what we're making. We're making a really hearty minestrone soup. So I'm going to get all this veg prepped and then you can come back once we start to actually cook. Just popping back on quickly to say that whilst I'm chopping all the vegetables, I have put the ninja onto saute and I'm going to spray some avocado oil into the um, pot of the ninja. Um, just want to say that on my um, Facebook um, memories, these, this came up today and it's a year old and it hasn't clogged at all it still sprays really well paid a little bit more for it but it just shows you you can buy some that do still spray after quite some time so right that's in and i'll carry on chopping then that's our veg all chopped so we can get on with making this soup into my preheated ninja goes the onions there you go you can hear it's preheated the um, celery and the carrots um, I didn't use all the veg that I had out purely because this is a soup just for Steve and I so I don't need as much as I had out but generally for four people you would need to um, use two carrots and the whole of the courgette and two sticks of celery and those of you who are regular viewers to the page will know that our steve hates loaves and detests celery doesn't he so right i'm just going to give these a stir and we'll have a proper look right they're having a nice little stir and all we're doing is just sauteing them quite gently so these are the harder veg so they obviously will need longer than the um, things like the courgettes. Um, Spot this soup out a little more, as well as the passata, you could use, I've got them in hiccups again, I'm so sorry. You could use a tin of tomatoes too. So they've softened nicely. So I'm going to go in with the courgette and the garlic. My pastry um, or dough scraper comes in really handy for a little veg like that. Don't use a knife if you can avoid it. Right, so that's just going to have a minute. And once I can smell that garlic, then we'll go on to the next step. Right, I can smell the garlic, I wish you could. So what I'm gonna oh, what I'm gonna do now is go in with a good squirt of ketchup uh, ketchup, no, this is tomato puree, isn't it? So if I go from here, I'm hoping you can see how much I'm putting in. It's probably 
just over a tablespoon I would say and we're cooking that first because sometimes if you don't it you do get this really harsh tomato -y taste and we don't want a tomato -y, a really harsh tomato paste do we right so I'm just going to move you again. And in we're going with some salt and pepper. Remember, you can always season after. You can't take away. I say that so often, don't I? Right. In with the beans. Now, the beans, you can um, drain them if you want. But I feel that this actually um, helps the uh, sauce thicken up using those beans. And I know it's a soup and I've said sauce. Right, in with the beans. Lovely. So next it will be in with the passata. Right, and now I can actually turn this off because I don't need it to be on sauté now. So that's fine. I'm turning it off. I'm going in with the passata which is just sieved tomatoes really, let's get real about this. Right, now we're going to go in with, give it a stir, and go in with the vegetable stock. Right, yeah, that's plenty. So, what's left? Oh, I know. Macaroni. So, this just, obviously, just remember that it will, obviously, it's pasta. It will soak up a lot of your sauce. But, I mean, I think that looks rather nice already. So, we're going to go in with the macaroni. I'm not going to push it down. I'm not going to stir it. That should be plenty. And do you know what I do now? You're going to love this. I pop the lid down. I make sure that my seal is, well, my vent is set to seal. I then need to go across. Let's bring you up. Oops, a daisy. I'll bring you out, actually. Right. All I do now is switch this on. Go across to pressure. I want to cook for seven minutes. You want a natural release, so I just press start. That's it. Right then, the Ninja has finished and we've got about, well, it's been off for about a minute and ten. Um, but guess what I forgot? I forgot two things. One of them I can rectify, the other I can't. I forgot to add any bay leaves to this. Steve will be pleased because he, you know, ask him whether he wants bay leaf or not and he'd say not but the thing i did forget that i can rectify is the basil so as i say i'm going to let this naturally pressure release for a while and then i'm going to add in the kale so when i add in the kale i'm going to well before i add in the kale i'm going to stir through some basil so fingers crossed all is not lost and as my mum used to say do as i say not as i do yeah well, pressure has released, so I should be able to open the lid. Yes, I can. I can slide across. If the pressure's not fully out, you will not be able to slide that button across. Okay. Oh, right. How lovely does that look? Right, it's going to smell a bit better if I add in this basil. So I'm going to add in probably a couple of teaspoons or thereabouts, yeah couple of teaspoons of basil stir that through now what I'm also going to do is I did hold back a little bit of the um, vegetable stock so I'm going to add that in now as well because as I say the pasta absolutely soaks up I mean can you see this do you not think it looks well I think it looks absolutely delicious right so now I'm going to go in with the kale that I chopped. 
and I'm just going to stir it and I'm going to leave it a few minutes I'm going to put the lid on and that will be enough for the kale to have wilted down so on goes the lid and I'm going to leave that until we get to nine minutes at the moment oh you can't see hold on now when we have a minestrone soup or even a bolognese steve likes to have some of this now when we were kids and growing up yeah we are this old honestly this was parmesan cheese you didn't get it as you can buy it now in uh segments or even freshly ground grated you, you got it like this. So this is dried. It's not the real thing. We know it's not the real thing. But what this actually works as too is a seasoner. So, and it's way, way cheaper than prop, oh, hiccups, proper Parmesan. So I'll put just a little on top of Steve's before I take it through and you'll see. I'll take the rest of it through with him because he loves it, yeah? Right, we're about ten and a half minutes now, so I'm going to lift the lid, and yeah, that has all melted, melted, wilted down. But what I need to do is I do need to just check to see if I need to add anything else, don't I? So let's just no, absolutely not. That is spot on. So now we serve. And this is a proper, it's a proper meal. It's not just like a, you know, a soup. Even the branded soups that you buy that say they're minestrone, yeah. This is much better, much thicker. Right, so I'm just putting some of the Parmesan cheese on Steve's and I'll take it through. And then we'll be back, of course, for my taste test. Right then, that's mine dished up. We're having it with a little bit of bread as well. Steve's having bread and butter. I don't like butter on my bread when I'm... Um, so let's see what you, I don't like butter on my bread when I'm having soup. Am I weird? Let me know in the comments below. But what I have to do now, of course, is taste it. And now I can get a bit of everything. So I've got some... I've got beans. I've got pasta. I've got some of the veggies and uh yeah let's go that is absolutely spot on even though i did forget the bay leaves and i did the bay and i did the basil at the last minute so if you want this recipe, it's available on the Facebook page in the kitchen with Pen. So just find us, ask to join. I'm not mean, I let most of you join. Um, so that's where you'll find the full recipe. If you've liked this video, please give us a like. Um, any comments, subscribe down, uh, subscribe. Oh, any comments, write them down below. You know, do you have butter on your bread when you're having soup? Um, are you like Steve? Do you hate bay leaves? Do you use this Parmesan cheese or is it what you used to use when you were young? So anything, just comment, not rude, just comment away and I'll happily answer. So I'd like to say thank you for watching this edition of In the Kitchen with Pen. I do hope you've enjoyed it. I do hope you tried the soup and if you do, or should I say when you do, please let me know what you think. And I'll see you again very soon in the kitchen with Pen. Bye bye. If you like what we're doing, don't forget to give us a like. If you'd like to subscribe, click on our picture here. If you want to see more videos of what we get up to, click here. Thanks for watching. Bye.